My internet is painfully slow for 2024, a problem all too many of us can relate to. And if you've ever wanted to play a game but knew it was going to take hours to download or needed a surprise update that you didn't know about, I feel your pain. And today I'm going to give you a solution that I myself have been using for a couple months now, and if you stick around to the end, there's another surprise coming. Now what inspired me to make this project was something called a DNS caching server, which was featured not too long ago in the Linus Tech Tips channel. In short, the DNS, or the domain name server, functions as a basic phone book for compute, which takes the address that you type into the search bar, say google.com for example, and translates it to an IP that a computer can read. This then allows you to connect to the server that you need to connect to. So how does that relate to what we're doing here? Well, simply put, a typical DNS caching server takes just about any unencrypted web traffic, so HTTP traffic it can, and stores it on a local hard drive so it can be accessed super fast in the future without having to reach out to outside sources to get the file. The problem is this is an extremely complicated process to set up that requires you know a lot about Linux, computers, networking, and more just to get it set up. As well as the simple fact that you can't really control what is stored on it. So for example, if you download a game and then you don't download the game again for months, those files will already have been overwritten by newer files that you've accessed. Meaning that realistically, it's only going to make your web experience a little faster and it's only going to benefit you if you have multiple people downloading a game in quick success. So instead, I found a shortcut to this, and we're going to be relying on a feature built straight into the Steam client itself, meaning that anybody with a brain in an old computer can do this in about an hour. Now obviously, you're going to need some type of computer that you can sacrifice as your new home server. Something like this is an old Dell Office PC with a Core 2 Duo in it. This one is not what I used, it doesn't even work, but for example, this is something you could use. An old laptop, an old desktop, really anything that functions as a computer can be used in this situation. Because for the most part, the only things that we need is to make sure that it can access the internet and that it has good or at least enough storage to accomplish the task you're trying to get it to do. I would say one terabyte is probably the minimum to be worth your while. Now if you don't have a computer just laying around, going on Facebook Marketplace or eBay and finding an old Dell Office PC with an i5 or an i7 fourth generation or so for less than $100 will be just fine. Then, slapping a 4 terabyte hard drive in, which is 50 to 60 bucks, you'll have a perfect machine for this use case, all for less than $200. That being said, technically, the more RAM and the faster the CPU, the better it is, especially if you follow the steps later on in this video when I do eventually mention the surprise that I was talking about. And of course, depending on where you live, you might really have to factor in power efficiency because older computers usually are less power efficient, draw more wattage from the wall, and produce more heat, which in some cases, especially people in Europe, could make things really, really bad for you in terms of power bill. I also highly recommend that you use an ethernet connection on this computer. Because while technically you can do this over Wi-Fi, it negates a lot of the benefits and you'll be heavily limited by your Wi-Fi spec. And if you don't have fast internet, you probably don't have fast Wi-Fi. Now, as for the OS, you don't need anything fancy. Just a simple copy of Windows 10 or Windows 11 will do just fine. If the computer already has Windows 10 or Windows 11, you're gold. But I would probably do a factory reset if I were you for plenty of reasons. If it doesn't have Windows 10 or 11, it's extremely simple to install them. There's plenty of guides on the internet, but all it takes is downloading the media creation tool from Windows themselves, USB stick, and maybe 15 minutes of your time. But seriously, that's it. Once you've got your OS installed, the only thing you have to do is go to a web browser, even Edge will work, and download the the Steam client, set it up, and you're good to go. Of course, there are a few settings that you're going to want to change just to make sure everything goes smoothly. First, make sure to go into Steam and make sure that file transfer over local network is set on. Also, I would recommend turning on transfers from this device to anyone. That way, anybody that comes over to your house can benefit from this, your friends and your family and whatnot. Also, I recommend setting the schedule auto updates feature to on. I personally have mine set from midnight to lunchtime. That way, games will only download their auto updates between those 12 hour periods when I'm most likely to not be gaming and you can set yours to whatever time works for you. And now would be a good time to tell you to make sure that your sleep and turn display off settings in Windows are set to never, because that could be really bad if your PC goes into sleep soon after you're done with it, negating the entire purpose of doing this. If you've installed Windows 10 or 11 Pro, you might want to make use of the remote desktop feature it has. I would recommend setting it up and turning it on for now. Because whenever we're done with this home server, we're just going to leave it sitting in a corner plugged up to power and ethernet, but it doesn't need a keyboard, a mouse, or a display. And that way, every time you need to change something on it, all you have to do is remote desktop in, as opposed to actually having to cook everything up, which really sucks. Well, now that it's set up, what exactly could you do with it? Well, first of all, you have to download your library of games to this computer, or at least the ones that you deem important, such as large video games, games that you uninstall and reinstall often, or maybe moddable games like Fallout 4 and Skyrim that often require fresh installs. Speaking of that, this whole Steam transfer thing has saved me so much time downloading Fallout 4 alone, it's insane. Because it only takes a couple minutes now, and it used to take about an hour and a half. Anyhow, once you have everything downloaded and set up, all you need to do is, like I said earlier, just sit it in a corner with an internet connection and power, and you're good. You'll have a server that's running 24-7, quietly serving anybody that needs it at any time. Any games you have downloaded on this computer will be able to transfer via Steam transfer across the network at super fast rates. But now, obviously, we've got to test the thing. So for our first test here, we had Doom 2016 
which is about a 70 gigabyte game that came in at about 58 gigabytes compressed. Now, it took only 15 minutes to download this game, which is kind of crazy when you consider the fact that if my network held steady at 10 megabytes per second, which is its maximum rated speed for the entire time of the download, which is highly unlikely to happen, it would take an hour and 40 minutes, meaning that it would take four times as long to download this game normally. And again, that's assuming that all things are held constant and go as good as they possibly can with no interruptions from disc reading or writing. Now, there are a few weird things that happen with Steam Transfer. For the first part, even though my server that I'm copying these files from is using a hard drive to store the games, when transferred over the network, it's fast enough to where you need an SSD on your computer in order to get the maximum download speed. For me, when I switched to an SSD over a hard drive, my download speed went up by about 100 megabits per second, and I'm talking about on my main gaming computer where I was downloading files to. It would be even faster if I had a SSD on my home server. Another thing is, depending on how fast your switch, your router, all of the different networking components in between are, it could affect things differently. If both of my computers had an SSD, fast processor, fast RAM, and I had 10 gigabit networking, there's no doubt in my mind that I could get a multi gigabit per second connection, which would be absolutely phenomenal, but something that I don't really have the financial ability to do right now. But that being said, the peak speeds of this transfer topped out at about 100 megabits per second. Even with there being plenty of room for potential upgrades in the future, 800 megabits per second is literally 10 times faster than my normal internet connection at its peak speeds. Which, that being said, 800 megabits per second is really, really good when you consider that, again, I'm limited by a 1 gigabit interface and I'm limited by a hard drive on my server itself. I am totally confident that somebody with a Dell office computer doing this could reach the same speeds as me. Again, I see plenty of benefits over Wi-Fi. The thing is, over Wi-Fi, things are a lot more spotty because downloading over Wi-Fi is never optimal. So for me, when I was doing it on my Steam Deck, I only got about a double speed boost or so, which is still significant, but just not as crazy as Wired is. Of course, this is where storage capacity and technology comes into play. If you have higher amounts of storage, obviously you're going to be able to put more games on it. If you have faster storage, like say an SSD, things are going to transfer a lot faster. And now that I'm thinking about it, Doing a RAID server in this way probably wouldn't be a bad idea either, because if you have multiple hard drives connected like that, since you wouldn't be needing them for random read and write speeds, yet, you could actually have better sequential read and write speeds, which is what you need. Also, if you haven't realized it yet, this only works with Steam games. Other games that aren't on the Steam network don't work, and the only way you're going to get a feature like this is to try to use the DNS caching server. But again, it's much harder to set up, and it's actually much more niche of a use case than this. Not to mention that now you actually have an auto-update feature like a console in rest mode, because you have a computer that's always on, always fetching updates, and so hopefully whenever you need to go access your game, the update will already be downloaded on the, your computer. That way all it has to do is transfer a couple of update files over and patch. That being said, Steam is really weird about the whole auto-update feature. Sometimes I'll come back to look at my server, and there'll be updates scheduled for a couple weeks in advance, even though there's literally nothing going on in the computer, and I have it set to auto update as fast as possible, but maybe that's just me. If this is really an issue for you, you might want to just go ahead and set an alarm weekly to force through the updates that you need. That way you won't ever have a problem when it comes time to actually downloading anything. And you know, having the ability to auto update and download games extremely fast over your network is cool and all. But in effect, you now have a computer sitting there filled to the brim with usable games that doesn't actually do anything all day. And as recently I've gotten into the world of handheld devices, a thought popped in my head. I have a server, I have games. Why not make it a gaming server? And that's where part two of this project was born. Now this is where I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that you're probably going to need to upgrade if you're using that old hardware that I was talking about earlier, or at least have semi new parts in your computer already. Lucky for me, even though I'm running this on a virtual machine, I've passed through eight Ryzen 7 3700X cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and my entire 3050, and things are running perfectly fine for me. But obviously you might not have the luxury of having this high of specs on your server. But as for your machine, really the main thing that matters is a good GPU. If you've already got a reasonably good CPU and a good amount of RAM in your computer, you might just be able to get away with installing a 1660 Super or a 2060 used and be fine. If not, I would recommend looking for older workstation computers with Xeon chips and at the very least DDR4 memory because this is really going to be the bare minimum you need for gaming in 2024. But the cool thing is, to do this, we don't need to do any more setup. It uses another Steam feature called game streaming. But again, of course, time to test the thing. So our first game here is GTA 5 streamed to my Steam Deck. My Steam Deck is running Windows here for the purposes of using OBS. 
And if you're interested in getting Windows up and running on the Steam Deck and usable in handheld mode, you can check out my video down below I did recently about it. I'll have it linked in the description. Now the streaming quality of this game is actually really, really good. It's streaming at 1080p, 60fps, and I noticed almost no stuttering, lag spikes, FPS drops, or anything like that. It was actually a really, really smooth experience, and it's actually sort of changed my mind about streaming, because I wasn't totally dead set on streaming, because you can have really bad experiences with streaming if you're not careful, especially if you're doing it from an outside server, but with my recent network upgrades and the good connection quality on my Steam Deck, it's great. Now compare that to GTA 5 running natively on the Steam Deck, again on Windows. Streaming wins by a considerable margin. I mean, there is absolutely no competition. Streaming GTA 5 is running really smooth quality, almost no input latency that you can actually tell, especially for a single player game that where it doesn't really, really matter. But running it natively, on Windows, albeit, there are plenty of FPS drops, performance issues, all kinds of stuff. Now, granted, GTA 5 runs much better when hosted on SteamOS. In fact, 60 FPS is pretty easy to achieve in story mode, and in online mode, you can expect about 40 FPS. But regardless of that fact, because the server is much more powerful, you can play just about any scene and almost never experience any kind of FPS drops, and you're actually rendering the game in 1080p, which is super sampling since the Steam Deck display can only display 1200 by 800 which is the 16 by 10 aspect ratio equivalent of 720p. I also stream GTA 5 to my Nintendo Switch. Yes, my Nintendo Switch. Do you want to know how I got game streaming working, or Android set up on my Switch for that matter? I'll have my video about my jailbroken OLED Switch linked down in the description. It's my most popular video by far, and I think you might enjoy it if you are interested in any kind of Switch hardware. Anyhow, streaming to the Switch is a much, much worse alternative than on the Steam Deck. Even though I set the Switch to only be streamed to in 720p, which is little less than half the pixels that are required to be streamed, it still runs really bad. There's a lot of FPS drops, lag spikes, and there's latency problems too. And this is due to a combination of things. First of all, it might have something to do with the Android installation not taking full advantage of the Switch hardware. Also. The Switch supports much older Wi-Fi standards, and it's much more dependent on where I am in the house. For example, if I go downstairs with my Switch, it's a much better experience as long as I'm close to my access point, but up here through a wall or two, things aren't so great. But you have to admit, it is pretty cool to be able to play AAA games on the Switch, even if they're being streamed across the network, and at meh quality. I also tried streaming Fallout 4 to my Steam Deck, and again, it's a fantastic experience. No FPS drops, really really good quality, almost no perceivable latency, and any lag spikes or latency issues, it doesn't matter. It's a single player game, and this has really turned me on to the idea of game streaming. Because the Steam Deck has really, really bad battery life. But if there's almost no perceivable quality difference and you're streaming games that take a fraction of the amount of power, you can actually play games on your Steam Deck for much longer in almost better quality, not almost, sometimes actually better quality than running them natively. So this is one of those scenarios that provided you actually have the hardware to do it and the network capabilities, why wouldn't you? And to compare it, I tried running Fallout 4 natively on the Steam Deck, again on Windows, and as I observed in my installing Windows on the Steam Deck video, it runs much, much worse than it does on SteamOS. But even on SteamOS, it doesn't run that great. And so once again, we're seeing this where we can either have occasional FPS dips and not too great graphic settings, or we can have a little bit of input latency and the chance to mess up if network things go wrong. Because even in the situations where you can run 60 FPS on the Steam Deck, you're often having to sacrifice a lot of graphical quality. And even with the relatively weak GPU of a 3050 in my server, it can do much, much more than the APU on a handheld gaming device like the Steam Deck. Streaming GTA to my Steam Deck is honestly way, way better than I thought. Like seriously, with my new recent Wi-Fi upgrades, it's actually somewhat better than running it natively on the Steam Deck because of the weird performance glitches and stutters that it can have. There is one issue that I did notice. The Steam Deck, unlike most devices, is 16x10, which most other computers are 16x9, and because of the oddness of streaming external displays, there is an option that you can set to adapt aspect ratio, but for some reason it doesn't work. So I had black bars, but they're not really that bad for me. From an investment ranging from free to at most a couple hundred dollars, you can have a server that has all of your games downloaded, which will allow you to stream them over the network at high quality or download them super fast and keep them auto updated while you're not even having to interact with it. And of course, after you have a home server set up in any capacity, the sky's the limit. You can actually get into the world of hosting Minecraft servers, Terraria servers, or even a home assistant server like me that allows me to control my lights from my phone. You can do anything you want to. I cannot recommend this project enough for those of you who have the means to do it. But if this video helped you or gave you any good ideas, please leave a like down below on the video and subscribe for more future content like this. I'm a very small creator and I'm really working hard to get monetized. Thank you for watching.